morning everybody welcome back to the channel we are here in deep creek lake in western maryland and we are doing something really cool something we've never done before we are out here ice fishing on the lake we have our we have our guide over there mr garrett hoffman he's setting us up some of these tip-ups you can see they got the little flag on them i'll show you how to use those we got Justin over here. He's jigging for some yellow perch. We got our holes. Got our fish finder. Little warm hut. It's a pretty different experience than anything we've ever done before. The kids were not interested at all. They're usually pretty good sports about our shenanigans and adventures we go on, but they heard the word ice and they were out. It's fine. So mom and dad are out having some fun today and trying something new. Let's see if we can wake up some of these lake monsters from their winter slumber. What are these things called? Tip-ups? I put this weight here on the bottom, or on the hook, and then let it go to the bottom. And then when it hits the bottom, you want to come up about you want your bait two feet off the bottom, but you want your uh, you want to take about 30 inches because you got this going down in the water 10 inches. And then I put a little split shot here to mark the depth so that if it goes off, we have to rebait it. That I don't have to put that weight back on there. fish pulls it, it goes off and the fish can run freely. So we chose to come out here with a guide because of uh, several different reasons. One is there's a lot of equipment involved in ice fishing. Obviously it's something we're probably only going to do this one time. There's no reason to invest in it. When you hire a guide, you get all the local knowledge of where to go. Obviously with ice fishing, there's the issue of safety. It should be your number one priority. They know where to go where the ice is thick enough and safe. So we hired a guide and let's see what we catch. Bigger perch. Be like that big around. Yeah. See, that yeah, was, I've seen a bunch of them. See, I was stomach's real lean. Yeah. Billy.
fishy. Yeah, buddy. Get a good view of it. You said you wanted to catch a walleye. Oh, okay. He's not big enough. Little tiny he's walleye. No, he's, he's, he's got to be fit. <clears throat> okay. These little teefies all up in there. Yeah. You got a mouth on him. All right, you want to... Big in for the day. We're still running too. On the ground. I'm hanging it all up. Oh, yeah. There we go. Another little perchy. About got a meal now. Mm -hmm. Alright, so spent the day on the ice, caught a mess of yellow perch, caught a couple walleye and a pike. They were both all small, we had to turn them loose. Heading back to the house. We'll see you there. Hey everybody, we're back from our ice fishing trip at the house and we have these yellow perch I need to clean and get ready to cook. And as you can see, this one was full of roe. I already removed that so we can cure the eggs and make some of those little poppy sushi eggs. We're gonna do a whole video on just that. But right now we're gonna fillet this fish and I already tried to fillet the sides off of it. There wasn't a whole lot of meat on one that was actually bigger than this one. So we're gonna do this a little differently. 
we're just going to cut there and flip the fish over we're going to do the exact same thing on the other side we're going to cut there then we're going to take this whole fish and we're going to take the head off like this and the guts should come right out with it for the most part you got the head and all the guts now we have this big chunk of fish and what we're actually going to do is we're going to scale this so we'll just take the back side of our knife and this is a messy process you do not want to do this in the house and we're going to start getting all the scales off this fish okay so we removed this guy's head. I tried using my fillet knife to scale him. It wasn't really working, so I went and got the next best thing, a fork. We're gonna turn it this way, and we're gonna go against the scales. Like I said, you do not wanna do this in the house. It's a super messy process. Scales go flying everywhere. Okay guys, we got this fish all scaled and cleaned out. It's head removed. And we're actually gonna just cook this fish whole. We're gonna dip it in batter, and just fry the whole thing and that'll allow us to eat around the bones and get more meat off of it than if I would have just tried to fillet it. Now I'm gonna clean the rest of these fish and get a fire going. I think we're gonna cook outside. It's really nice today. Okay guys, I had to go change my shirt. I was covered in fish scales. We're gonna get cooking. We're going southern today. So we're gonna make some collard greens to go with our fried whole fish. The first thing we gotta do is get the fire going. Go, we have fire. We're gonna put some salt pork and some onion and get those sweating in the can cooker for our collard greens. It's the first process. While those get started, we'll go ahead and get the other side going and start heating up some peanut oil for our fish. Anytime you're frying fish, the best thing you use is peanut oil. I'm using quite a bit today. Let that start heating up come over here we're going southern we're gonna use some of this Louisiana seasoned fish fry the crispy kind all you got to do pour it in your paper sack Take a couple of your fish, your whole fish you got here, throw them in the sack. We'll just start with two. We've got a small pan, so let's cook them in batches. Just shake it up. Okay, guys, we've tried this. A million different ways we keep running into trouble so we finally just decided to cook in the outdoor kitchen because it's too windy my little stove camp stove wasn't working so now we're cooking we got our onions and our salt pork wetting in the pan getting ready for the collard green our oil's getting nice and hot for our fish Go ahead and put in the collard greens. Get them cooking. Put in just some water.
Anytime you're cooking collard greens, southern style, you want to add a little vinegar to it. Not a whole lot, you don't want to overpower it, but probably like that much. It's probably three or four tablespoons worth. A little salt. little pepper. We'll just get the lid on there and get it locked down let that start steaming cooking those collard greens. Now that our oil's nice and hot, get our fish out of the bag. Take off any excess powder, and he's gonna go straight in the oil just like that. Fins and all. Okay, guys, this has been on probably five minutes or so we're gonna flip these fish the idea is we want them to get nice and crispy oh yeah it's gonna be delicious there we go we got our collards they're steaming now if I had to equate ice fishing to anything it's a whole lot like saltwater fishing because you never know what you're gonna pull out of the hole in the ice and it's a whole lot of fun okay guys this fish is crunchy and done we're gonna set it on some napkins look at that Super crispy. That is going to be delicious. We're going to let our collards cook a little longer. Always add a can of tomatoes in my collards. I just like the acidity that it adds. Get those in there. Let them cook down with the collards. All right, guys, we got our lunch done. This fresh yellowtail from ice fishing yesterday. Cooked it whole, just cut the head off and scaled it and cooked it whole. We got our collard greens with our salt pork and tomatoes. Let's try this tail. It's supposed to be crunchy like a potato chip. Wow. Wow, that's so good. Our collards. Doing a home style meal tonight. Man, that's really good. So if you stay tuned at the end of this video, you'll catch some bonus footage of me finding some ice holes that fishermen had left in the in the lake a few days before us and I fell in. Not once, twice. Anyway, thanks for checking out the channel, guys. We really appreciate every view, every sub. If you haven't already, check out all our other videos. If you like hunting and fishing and travel and the outdoors, this is the channel for you. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button on this video. Leave us some comments, and we'll catch you in the next one.